Um, Deion Sanders was upset because we had the NFL draft a few weeks ago, right? Was it last week or a few weeks ago? Shout out yeah, to the yeah, Jets. Last, the Jets. Thursday, last Thursday. My, my two Jet fans on hand had a very good draft. I got to say, y'all had a very good draft. Thank you, very, sir. Thank you. Thank very, you. Very good draft. I'll give it, I, I, hopefully, they'll be competitive because I love when New York teams are both competitive because it's, it's nothing like good sports radio when you're driving home. Yeah, every, every 30 or 40 years, we both. <laughs> 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 See, it wasn't me. It Yo, was a, 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 oh, the own Jet fan did that tonight. I'm going to be me. real. I just got to be real. <laughs> but anyhow, Deion Sanders was really upset that not one black, historical black college player got uh, picked up in this draft out of 250-something players. I forgot what this, the number is. You guys, thoughts on that? I'm, I'm at, I think we're having an issue now with HBCUs now anyway. They're kind of under fire a little bit with funding and everything as I as – I, Kind of heard. I, I didn't. I did not have the pleasure of attending one. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But um. But I believe that's what I heard. And it seems like um. I don't know, man. Maybe some of the maybe some of these uh so some of the students are making business decisions. You know, not going into the HBCUs in the first place. So who's actually playing in there that's NFL worthy? You know what I mean. So um. You know. So I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar with, with the players. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. So here go, here go my issue with that is that the the colleges, I mean the college, sorry, the NFL are not going to even to see these these kids. Like for instance, in Florida, say Florida A and M, they have to go down the block and try to get somebody to come. And some of the some of the scouts will only bring maybe one or two people come to see these historical black college players. Now we have some dynamic historical black college players. If I'm going to mention Jerry Rice, Harry oh, Carson, yeah. you know, yeah. I got to go a uh, uh, Shannon Sharp. You know, we only yeah. talking about Hall of Fame caliber of players. Oh, yeah. Steve yeah. McNair, God bless the dead Steve McNair. You know, uh, it, it's just a shame that they never even come to look at our players. But I like right. the move. That, you know, and now you got Deion Sanders or people like that's going to bring light to the historical black house. You got uh, Eddie George that went out to um, – oh, man, I forgot the name of the school he went to. He's going to he's, he's gonna, he's gonna be the coach there at the school. Uh, hey, what is the school? I can't even think of the name of the school right now. But anyhow, but hopefully – but I think it's a shame that they didn't even come and look at the players. I'll get, you know, so, it's, so that's what, I, that's what but I, I think this is the thing, you know, wherever you have leverage, you have to have to use it. The NFL is about 75 to 80 percent black. The star athletes in the NFL have to be the ones to use their leverage. They have right. to be the voice. People are not going to give you something because it's right. They're yep. only going to give it to you because they have no choice. And so as a result, the, the NFL players need to say, look, I want you to start doing things for my alma mater. I want you to start recognizing. I want you to start acknowledging the fact that, they're talent, that, that there's talent there. Everybody's not going to go to Ohio State. Everybody's not going to go to USC. And so they've got to lean on them. And, and, and listen, you do that when you get to that podium uh, at the Super Bowl. You do that when you're uh, dealing with the international press. You start making noise about things and you start knocking down doors and if the the door doesn't open then you create a new door and that's what we've got to do i think that's the reality of it because they're not going to go they basically look at the black colleges like a minor league system yeah it's not and and they don't look at it as 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 one that feeds the nfl they don't so they're making you conform to go to these schools and then they say that these schools are the standard you know what i'm saying Mm. so we've got to we've got to really start you gotta you, you gotta unfortunately nothing is given to us. That's why so many people was afraid of the COVID shot because it was free. Nothing is no, really, really. That's nothing, true. That's true. That is nothing true. is ever given to us. So when something yeah. is, we question it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. And, and, and you're right. It's like I'm just so sick when I have the argument with certain black people and it's about well, Ohio State have this, this kind of gymnasium. Now Ohio State has this kind of equipment. They can give my kids, my child, this. But I'll keep trying to tell them. Only reason Ohio State has those, that kind of gymnasium and gyms because it's off of black talent. Think about it. We took that same talent. The Coca Colas will come over to uh, the the Virginia Unions. I'm just using your school oh, ex <laughs> <laughs> I know I how you. I, I, you only went there. You only went there for a short period of time. Yes, I did. Yes, I, did. I, just, I, I just want to use that as an example. <laughs> but, <laughs> But I think you I think you answered the question just now though, man. I mean, a lot of these students are making business decisions, man. They're going to where the scouts are going are going to visit. You know what I mean? The the Ohio States, you know, the Michigans, they are they are, you know, NFL factories. 
you know, and that's where they're going. Yes, the star athletes are still black, you know what I mean? But they're just not going to HBCUs. They're going right. to places, yeah. you know? But yeah. it's, it's almost like, it's, to me, it's almost like people got to realize, like, when St. John's, let's use St. John's as an example, right? St. John's, when they had the best basketball talent back in the 80s, right? When you talking about was Mark Jackson, you talking about Walter oh, yeah. Berry and all that stuff. So, so all those guys, nice. you know, uh, Chris Mullins, the reason I had that talent because back then St. John's didn't have dorms, right? So the players didn't go, uh, the best players that they, their parents got the rent paid for the school so they could commute every day from home. So once mm. you took, once they built the dorms and then they pay that, the parents like, oh, I can send them to Tennessee. Tennessee might give, you know, send them here for a bag or whatever, you know, the booster, yeah. right? you know what I'm saying? Allegedly, <laughs> you know, those kind of things going on, you know, and that's what happens. So, and the historical black, so same thing, the historical black college, if you could just keep the, the best talent, the best ball handles in New York. Let's keep it a buck right. back in the day. I don't know about now, but back in our day it was. Right. right. If we could have kept that, you know, local talent to a Hunter College could have went to a St. Right. John's, you know, but they all went elsewhere. So the thing with the black the black athletes are so dope, especially in football and basketball, if they just stayed home. But we've seen that with, with some of these other athletes uh, coming out. We're going to talk about that in like a couple of seconds. I know, Kevin, you're about to say something. No, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, the, the, the reality of it is, and I learned this early on, going to, I, I went to a Virginia Union University early on, and what happens is the funding is just not there. People do not, you know, see, that's the whole thing with this. We're never on an equal playing field. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? And so, you know, a lot of schools rely on uh, alumni donations and things like that. The federal government right. was not giving a lot to these schools and all that stuff. And so, as a result, you know, some people would go there because they didn't have their grades right or they the, the school would extend an olive branch to them and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, these NFL teams and owners and GMs, they owe it to these schools just to give them a chance. See, I always say this about people. When you hear people talk about equality, you've got to ask yourself, do people really want equality? People would like equality if it doesn't cost them something. And the reality of it is it will cost something. And some people feel like if I give you something, then it's going to be less for me. And that's what I see all the time. There's a lot of people that want society in this country to stay exactly where mm -hmm. it is. Right. And if the goalpost moves slightly, there's, it's always panic. That's what we saw on January 6th, where, where people are afraid of what's coming. So what I realized, and I've always been taught this, and I think we, we've learned it from, from Malcolm X, by any means necessary, if nobody's going to help you, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And we've got, but the, the question is, are we willing to sacrifice? So, so our, our black kids, indeed, you make a good point. If these black kids said, I'm not going to these major programs and I'm going to all black schools, they would come there. Mm -hmm. They're they going to follow. They're going to follow yeah. the talent. They're going to follow the talent because whoever's going to be had the hot basketball player and all the kids going to want to uh, follow, you know, see where it sneak is, they're going to follow. They're going to follow. Like the, the Nike will follow right to that spot. But since we're on that topic, Sha uh, Shaquille O'Neal's son, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Derek, you remember how his, his name is pronounced? Shakir. Shakir, Shakir, I believe. Yeah, Shakir. Yeah, yeah he's another one of the celebrity athletes that kids are joining out, going to historical black colleges. I think his son has enrolled into Texas Southern University. I think, um, uh, what's him called? Uh, Strahan. Did Michael Strahan go to Texas Southern? I think he was to Texas Southern University, oh, okay. too. Yeah, so so I'm glad that Shaq, maybe Shaq, his son, will bring on some light to see now of what some of these kids going on too. So but hopefully dude, a lot see, of D, D, yeah. I'm sorry to cut you that that that's, that makes my point. You know, where Shaq's son can afford to do that. Right. Shaq's right. son is is a millionaire already. He don't have to be yeah. a Pro Bowl player. He don't have to whatever. He don't have to graduate college. He's he's right. gonna be rich yeah. for the rest of his life. And yeah. so yeah. what happens is the other kids in the situation, nobody from the historical black college can come and slip you some money under the table. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, literally, it's nothing they can really offer. You they, know, what they, I mean? slip, they slip me a fake ten dollar bill. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't have the facilities. They don't have the facilities. I mean, Virginia Union University. We had toilets. We just ain't had no dividers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. People's leaving there like, forget it. I'm just going to go to jail. I just can live better than this. Like, I mean, you know, and so, but I'm glad, I'm glad Shaq, one thing Shaq's son does bring, he brings notoriety. And yeah. that means Shaq will be at these games. And yeah. that means that you'll get some attention and things like that. And so that's very, very important. You Shout know, out to him, yeah. Shout yeah, out to yeah. making a socially responsible decision. You know what I mean with regard to where he's going to get an education. Number one, 
but also the light that he's bringing to you know to the schools and to HBCUs. It's a wonderful thing. To we see. need a different world back, y'all. We need we a do. different world back. We need. We let me tell you. So I'm gonna tell you honestly, D. I did not know anything about historically black colleges until school days came up. Mm. Yeah, see, I didn't know anything about it until school days. That's came that's that, that is that I can say that I, I might be in a long, I can't remember back then, but you might be right. I didn't start learning about more. I didn't know about the 115 at the time. Like, right, that's, that's about, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know about like those kind of things. I didn't know the history of, of Cheney University. I didn't know, you know, Lincoln University, those kind of things. I didn't know about those schools that were so close to our New York area at the time, you know. So I, I, I totally agree with you on that. School day, right. think about it, they said oh, historical black college was overcrowded back then. And they said mm -hmm. that's a book that when, when when that came out and Dwayne Wayne said he wanted to be an engineer, they said there are more black kids, men trying to register to become engineers because of Dwayne Wade. Dwayne wow. Wayne, right, Dwayne right. Wayne. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. And, and, yeah. I mean, you know, think about it. If you watch Def Comedy Jam, Martin was always wearing Hampton shirts. All the all the rap sticks. all the rappers did. Everybody wore those the, things. The black of the berry, I mean no, the black of the college is sweeter than knowledge shirt. Right. All and that, you know, so yeah. those things were really, really good. And then at the same time, you had a, a, a lot of black filmmakers coming up. You had yeah. Maddie Rich, you had Spike Lee, yeah. you had yeah. these guys, I think Singleton came on the scene. You started having these guys pop up and somewhere along the line, somewhere mid to late nineties, it just shifted. It was a yeah. paradigm shift and it all went away as fast as it showed up. Yeah, yeah. And that affected they, us. They, they got rid of the budgets on that and they went to reality shows that were cheaper to make and, you, and they, sell, they started selling trauma and drama. Right. Yeah, there you go. So that yeah, that's yeah. so you know, like I'm gonna get on next week. Oh, we're gonna talk about Tamron Hall, and I'll tell you about that. Her trauma ass. But um, I'm not gonna bring that because I know Jamie. They like he like that kind of chick. But I, I'm gonna speak on it. 